Alrighty, so lots of information in here uh, in section 29 around the second coming. As I said, it's like a condensed version of it and um, we've had some really good insights this week on this. So if you've missed them all, go back and watch them. If you're on Facebook, they're on the page. If you're on YouTube, then they're chronologically should be in the timeline. And if you're on Instagram, then they're under my posts. They'll be in there. Um, and I, yeah, you'll see them listed. I'm wearing the same clothes. I tell you what they are. The titles will run in order. Super easy to find. All right. So we're going to finish on verse 45 of section 29. Uh, and I love this one because... Actually, it's like, well, from 36 through to 50 really covers who's who. That's a, not as in a, um, you know, who people are, but in a where you're going to end up and how, you, how you're going to fall. And um, at the end of it, it talks about like little children who haven't reached the age of accountability, what happens to them, how they're, they, and, and also those that aren't mentally capable of understanding the whole like choices and and wrong choices and not so good choices and you know because there are and I've got a couple of friends like that they really they have some understanding but not complete understanding they really don't understand um it is just not in their minds and you know that's fine and I love them and I am super excited to meet them when they do have full understanding because I love them as they are now they're only just going to get better so you know that's all good. If you know anyone like that, aren't you excited to meet them? Yeah, right? Oh, so one of the reasons I want to live worthy so, it, worthy, so I can get to meet them. But I'm just going to focus on verse 45, which says, For they love darkness rather than light, and their deeds are evil, and they receive their wages of whom they list to obey. And list in this instance isn't like a shopping list. This is list as in lean. So who they lean towards. Um, who's paying their wages? So whose payroll are you on? Uh, I really like that. The, the, the verses before it really cover um, the, it covers the fall of um, Adam from the Garden of Eden. It covers those that just willingly go off and just be like, no, nah, I'm not going to listen to anything Jesus Christ has to say. Uh, I don't want to be interested in any of it. Like really, there's so many opportunities given. Um for people to say no, uh, not just on the earth. Like there's people that have never heard the gospel on the earth and that's that's not the same thing. I'm talking like there's multiple opportunities given throughout your timeline of being a human being for you to say no to Jesus Christ, knowing who he is. Um, so, you know, there's multiple opportunities in there. It's not just a one-off thing, um, as people would have you believe. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Um, so, verse 45, who are you getting your wages from? Who are you listening to obey? Um, so, you'll liken this to a work contract, because this is how I'm trying to think, to explain it the best to my class next week. Well, no, it'll be this week. Yeah, I'm filming this a week early, you know that. So, when I explain this to my class, how am I going to explain this to make it the best sense? And I sort of came up with this, felt inspired that this was right. So, liken it to a work contract, because most of us know what a work contract is, right? When we go in and get employed... Um, you know, if we start off somewhere like McDonald's or Burger King or something like that, supermarkets, those kind of places, and the work contracts are fairly standard and you just sign it because you're happy to have a job. And eventually, most of us, not all of us, some stay because they're happy and it works for them, but most of us move on to better and brighter things. Um, or we even move up at, you know, we start at checkouts and we move up to checkout supervisor and then we're grocery manager or something. So we sign new contracts along the way. So think of it as a work contract. Um, there are conditions and expectations and we work, we get annoyed with co-workers and we take lunch breaks. So think of this this whole like who we work for thing, this life thing as a work contract. Um, just for this, like to make sense of this. But who in life are you working for? So in this work contract, in this life that you have signed to come work in this life, who are you working for? Right? Because your life, your end of life bonus comes from who you list to obey. So who is that? So we get our paydays. You know, people say, oh, you got payday. It's like, you know, there's little paydays all along the way. So if you're working for Satan, you'll get little paydays. He'll make them seem really interesting. He'll make them seem really good. 
but then he requires more of you and he doesn't pay you so that goes real bad um I know working for Jesus Christ, because I would say, yes, I work for Jesus Christ. I do what he would have me do. I have signed a contract with him that I would happily do what he asked me to do. And I'm not perfect at my job. And occasionally we have to have meetings where I'm on a warning. You know, doesn't it make sense when you think of it as a work contract? And I've been on a warning. I've had to see my supervisor, the bishop, um, and been on a warning. Um, sometimes my job has been in jeopardy, like what my job is to do. And like, I'm still part of the employment team, but what I have to do as a job is in jeopardy and my job changes. Um, sometimes I'm demoted, sometimes I'm promoted. Sometimes I say, you know, can I take a lesser role? So think of it like that. But ultimately, who is paying you? And at the end of the day, your Christmas bonus, if you will, at the end of the year, where's it coming from? Whose payroll are you on? Because you'll get paid from who you list to obey. And that, ultimately, is either going to be really freaking awesome and beautiful or very disappointing. So think about that. Um, Elder James C. Faust, he said this really awesome thing. And I just, it, it's so true that if you've been through um, trials and tribulations where you think, oh, the gospel holds me back, and I've done that, I've been thinking, you know, oh, church takes up time on a Sunday when I could be doing other things, and I'll go anyway, and I've persevered with it and not really appreciate it. This is years ago. Uh, but it's true. I have been there and felt that, that it's, what's the point, blah, 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 you know, eh, and you get that meh going on. Um, and that actually obedience to all this leads to more freedom. And this is what James E. Faust says. He said, obedience leads to true freedom. The more we obey revealed truth, the more we become liberated. Now, if you're out of that, and you're looking in on it, thinking, oh, that's so restrictive, and it's really not. Yes, there are restrictions in our work policy, but they are to keep us safe. They are like OSH regulations. I don't know what the OSH is in the States here. It's occupational safety and health. Maybe you've got that something else, but it keeps us safe in the workplace. It keeps ladders from falling off us or us falling off ladders. It keeps sharp knives not cutting us. It keeps sick people not at work having a day off like it's all those things so the restrictions actually make it better actually help us um so yeah i love that from not faust that obedience leads to true freedom the more we obey revealed truth the more we become liberated and if you're in that try, you know it's true and if you're not try it really throw yourselves into it if you're watching this and you're sort of on that that sort of position where you're sort of not feeling it Throw yourselves into it and look at it more, even if it's just for a while, so you can get your head around the concept as a work contract and that these things are in place for your safety and that the Christmas bonus you get at the end of the year or the end of your life is either going to be amazing and wonderful and full of all the things that the Lord's promised you or it's going to be full of some very disappointing empty promises from Satan. Yeah. So... Throw yourselves into it. Give it a shot. And I'm going to leave you with that because that's this week. Now, next week is the Easter lesson. And I might take a break. I might just do some other awesome things for Easter. I don't know. Maybe we'll come up with some other stuff. But there's no set lesson as such. There's a couple of scriptures to go over and things like that. And then there's conference as well. So, that's that. Okay. So, Easter lesson, conference, all kind of the same week. And then Doctrine and Covenants 30 which is my fave, fave, fave scripture in the entire Doctrine and Covenants, the Doctrine and Covenants 30, 11, and goes back a long time to when I was like 14. So that's ooh, 32 years ago. There you go. Um, that's how old I am. But anyway, it was really cool then, and it stayed with me. So I appreciate that, and I'm going to make that really super awesome. All right, this has already gone too long. So love you guys. Have a great week. And I will see you next week for um, Easter. Okay.